Adam says, how do you deal with folders which could belong to one site, but are used by other departments which don't have access to that site? For example, each department has their own private site, but needs access to a finance folder owned by finance to submit receipts, et cetera. I don't know if it's the best to keep the, these department folders in the finance site, make a finance folder on each department site, or have a finance folder in all the, the in the all company intranet. What do you suggest that works best? It needs to be somewhere where finance can access all the folders easily, where departments can find them easily, and where permissions are restricted to each department. Hire a business process architect. <laughs> yes. Seriously. Hundred percent. Well, I think the last the last part of that question was and where all departments can find them easily and where permissions are restricted to each department. Yeah. Well, that right there says, well, you then you need to have it within each uh with the within each site. Or I mean, you, you could, could go one better. Is it teams? You could go one better and you could do something like a power app or power automate where basically they're entering the information or uploading the files that need to happen and a system account or a privileged account is then taking that information and depositing it into the finance site so they literally have no access to be able to touch it. Because I was talking about ways to things, do this. for example, but that's kind of very much a one way. It's a matter of the earlier where it goes, if they've got to access the files within it, that then is a different argument because if it's going mm -hmm. one way information in compared to I've also got to be able to pull it back or do, then yep. that's, that's a different answer. Chances are it there is, are additional considerations beyond I, these. That's well, the whole well, idea of possibly. the business process. That's crazy process. talk, Sean. That's Maybe. crazy talk. I tell people all day long, you don't have a SharePoint problem, you have a process problem. Yeah. This is one of those, Sean. Yeah. There, there are a number of different ways you can do that. Look, I, I've seen a shared folder where there are document level permissions. And yes. so the, it, you password protect that and give access. You could also, it's a, if it's in Teams, you could go in and create private channels for each of those constituencies and if then have those permissions managed. Right. <laughs> I think yeah. the downside always comes down to of ease of being able to find it because if you've got a private kind of SharePoint and you open one folder up on that SharePoint site, then people trying to find it after the fact, then it becomes that much more challenging. Is it a site where all those common things should be sitting and you just plug that folder into your Teams, for example? You can plug it in as an add a, add a folder so you've got all access easily for you. That's a so it comes down to can you find it? Is it easy to get to? Where should it sit? And is that sit? <laughs> Where should it sit? Uh, yes. it's a time there. Um, and it comes back to said business process and architect design. Yeah. What's going to be the best place? Yeah. Well, except for that last line about difference in permissions and access it controls around that. I mean, I've been a, a huge advocate coming from a project management background of having like a centralized PMO type site, which everyone has broad access to, and that might have templates and other core central documentation where it's owned by the PMO, the centralized organization, uh, the project management organization, but everybody has the ability to go in and view or to create from templates new documents off of those things. Now, I know it doesn't quite fit this scenario, but again, like anything, you look at what is the outcome? What are you actually trying to achieve? Are you putting right. rules and and you know in place that really don't need to be there be there to meet those end those outcomes, desired outcomes? Um, it, but if you have that, if you have that end level, you know, nuanced permissions and uh, controls that you need to be in place around each one of those departments, yeah, having an information architect go through and kind of divide that, but uh, it, it it all leads the way that I would approach it, be you know, back to that where each of the functional areas has the necessary folders and and as the project owner, just make sure that the finance team has project XYZ finance folders. The project team has project XYZ project folders or finance folders or whatever. And so you have those designated areas. It's about having consistent naming me mechanisms and structure so that when you go and deploy it out there, um, that the same pieces 
are in each place. So the finance people know where to go. The project people know to go. The executive team, the leadership team know where to go for project X, Y, Z and every other project. Yes. So it's just a highly templated. And you can do that with a provisioning solution as well. Have it very structured. Say every new project site or product site you know, it has a designated template and there are these components which include that folder structure that needs to be there with all the naming mechanisms, all of that already in place. It sounds like a lot of work, but I've worked in regulated areas where we had to, we were the same company, but we had firewall divisions. And so we had to do that. There was a lot of duplication of that structure, but we were legally required to go and do that. And it worked. It, it took extra clicks and things to get through to get to it, but we could do it. Uh, the other one would be, does the whole organization need to have access to it? Or just certain core components of some people because that would change where it sits to. Right. Mm -hmm. flat, flat structure is always preferred if you could do that. And then let the let the the rules the let the regulations that you must adhere to kind of guide changes but the those are exceptions the rules should be flat everybody has access and then kind of add the restrictions from there as needed well yeah because back to the permissioning thing is the more you poke holes in that the more work it is the higher your risk is the more work it is the less compliant it is the less secure it is the more you have you know opportunity for errors and problems and all kinds of things so it, it, it's it's really in your best interest as much as possible to to not do anything unique if you don't need to yeah, yeah it makes for a brittle system <clears throat> <clears throat>